So I had bought my wife for her birthday in 2019 a Jeep Wrangler because I had my Nissan Frontier and I jacked up my Nissan Frontier. And I did a lot of work to that truck. I did a lot of work to it. I put a five inch cow mini drop bracket. Then I put the SPC adjustable upper control arms, old man emu heavy duty 608 springs with Bill Stein adjustable 5100s in the front, add a leaf in the rear on top of the lift kit. And that got me 11 inches of ground clearance on my front differential. Then I built a custom bumper, put a winch, put LEDs on there, on the front. I wired them in. I built my own custom rock sliders. I built the basket, rig, uh, rigged the basket out. And we did a lot of off-roading in that truck and had a lot of fun with it. Same thing for the Jeep. But we have three kids. I have a daughter who's 11. I got a four-year-old and I have a right at two-year-old now. The kids are only getting bigger and the truck is only feeling smaller. Now I know I have had the Jeep, which is a four seater. And I also had my truck, which was a five seater, but we were still very cramped when we would go camping and we would go off-roading all day, or we would go fishing or do any type of off-roading. By the time we loaded everything out and had everything ready to go, it was just so small. The Nissan Frontier was a wonderful truck. I bought it brand new in 2016. I had it for three years, well, almost four years, and it was a wonderful truck. I love that truck. It broke my heart to get rid of it. It really broke my heart to get rid of it. Same thing for the Jeep, but we upgraded to bigger full-size trucks. Are these going to be as capable as the smaller trucks on tight, hard Jeep trails? Probably not, but there's always a detour or another trail or another track we could get around. If we can't get around those tracks, well, then we'll just find other places to go. It's not that big of a deal. So the gas mileage is by far worse. There's l less aftermarket and accessories for these, but they're bigger and they're more comfortable for the family and off-roading and everything else. So eventually I'm going to put a front bumper on mine and I'm going to put a winch on it. Same thing for my wife's. Eventually I'm going to put a front uh, light bar on hers and on mine as well. I'm gonna do the rear bumpers. I'm gonna do still rear bumpers in the rear, along with also backup lights, well, LED backup lights. Blinker would have been nice before you got here, but that's okay. So <clears throat> we're gonna do that as well. Now, like I was saying about the bug out kits, we like to go out off-roading and we, we don't really rock crawl, we don't really mud, we just go out and we like to trail ride and we like to find nice, fun places to go. But I'm also, um, I like to prepare. So I got a, a toolbox that's a fully loaded bug out kit that has you know wrenches, sockets, uh, Allen keys, star bits, specialty sockets, pliers, you name it. It's completely loaded out. I'll do a video on it. And I have another toolbox that I'm gonna actually do a full loadout with all the electric cordless tools because both the trucks have 110 DC converters. So that way we can charge cordless drill batteries and that way we can have a cordless chainsaw and everything else in case we need to cut some trees down on the path. Uh, we're gonna get an onboard air compressor for the trucks as well. So that way when we air down, we'll be able to air our tires back up and we don't have to sit there with a hand pump. Uh, we're gonna carry jack stands and just things like that, that if you did ever need it, you would have it because when you're 800 miles away from home, the last thing you wanna have to do is call a tow truck or a wrecker if it's something you can fix yourself, if you just have the simple tools to do it. So with these trucks, we have more room and the capability of carrying more equipment with us. Are they heavier? Yeah, sure, but they also have more power. We got six recovery tracks that we bring with us. Two for each axle, the front axle, the rear axle, and the trailer axle in case we get stuck with our camper. So we try to be prepared the best we can when we go out. So the Frontier was a beloved truck and I loved it, but on to bigger and better things. Frontier was paid off, this one's not. We'll get it paid off though so now me and my wife has a his and hers and the best part the reason also why we got rid of the frontier and the jeep was with the frontier and the jeep we would have to carry separate parts for both vehicles whether it was u-joints axles drive shafts um, hoses tire rods track bars drag links you name it it would be two separate sets of parts with these we only have to buy one part and it'll fit both trucks because it's they're identical except for one's black and one's silver so if we buy tire rods if we buy cv axles um, radiator hoses a radiator control arms ball joints front drive shaft whatever 
we might need it for the trail if we break down. Well, the best part is if we break, we only have to buy one set and then we're able to repair the other truck, one, one of the trucks at least. So there's a lot of benefits to having the same vehicle and there's a lot of things that are wonderful about having the same vehicle and it just makes it a lot more simple to be able to have all the tools and all the parts for just one truck, but it's enough for two. More room, less parts we have to bring with us, less tools we have to bring with us, and just overall more power, more performance. And the other thing about the Frontier was the Frontier, whenever I would pull the camper, the camper's only 2,600 pounds. I would go from 240, 250 miles to the tank down to about 80 to 100 miles to the tank. So I would, I would go maybe 100 miles 75 miles, 100 miles, and I have to stop and fill up. So you can't go on a road trip. Like when we, we went to Big Bend with the camper, and if I would have took the Frontier, we would have had to stop every 100 miles to fill up. Now this truck right here, when it was stocked, it was getting around 300, 320 miles to the tank. Now that we have the lift kit with the tires and everything else, it's getting closer to maybe 225, 230 with the bigger tires. But when we pulled the camper, we were getting around 200, 210. So we didn't really lose that much gas mileage on, on when we were pulling the camper. With my Frontier, yeah, we, we lost a lot. It was it was terrible, terrible, terrible. And that's in the Houston area, right? That's, that's flat ground. That's not like climbing hills, like going through Austin or San Antonio or going to West Texas, where it's all up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. It probably would've got far worse than that if it wasn't for that. So I'm gonna do a video, I guess, on the bug out kit next to show you guys what all I have. I think that'd be a pretty cool video to show y'all what we carry with us when we go on our trails, but maybe I'll do another video as well whenever I get my wish list of all my electrical tools and all my cordless ones. So.